Hi and welcome. My name is Rafael Taubinger and this video is about practical hints when writing a bootloader. Uh, you might be wondering uh, if there are some hints or easy ways uh, when working with a bootloader and application. And of course, from IR side, we can give you some really good hints. I mean, uh, how to organize the projects, should you use one or two projects, how to split the memory map, are there specific uh, configurations? Can debugging made e be easier? So we have a lot of information about that. So let's get into Embedded Workbench so you can have a feeling what I'm talking about. So I have here IR Embedded Workbench for ARM open. And uh, the best way to get started when writing uh, a bootloader it's, uh, of course, uh, to make sure that you split uh, or mainly have two projects. I mean, one project for the bootloader and then one project for your application. This will, of course, also simplify uh, the way uh, you work and you can see the transition from the bootloader jumping to the application and it will also make easy uh, the debugging approach. So if we look here, I have here ready set a project with a boot uh, project and application. Notice that I'm using an IMX8 um, device here, but uh, this can be used in a generic way. It doesn't matter if you are using a MCU or a MPU. Uh, the initial approach here and the practical hints are, of course, uh, the same. Of course, you might need to do some small adjustments, uh, register settings, interrupts, uh, vector table, and so on. But uh, I will not uh, go into that details right now here. So first step is of course uh, to have the two projects, as I mentioned, make sure that the devices and the two projects are of course the same, the application and the bootloader need to have uh, similar uh, settings, of course. So what you need to do, uh, of course, is to make sure that you do the memory mapping in the right way. So if I just open here the linker file here for uh, the bootloader, uh, you will see uh, that uh, the ROM, uh, of course, uh, is uh, set here um, to start um, and end on a specific address. And um, depending on what you use, uh, if you use external uh, flash, SPI flash, that, of course, needs to be also adjusted. But uh, as you can see, uh, the bootloader ends here at 3 uh, F. And if we look here on uh, the application, we can, of course, uh, start it uh, right after, uh, including uh, the vectors and everything else. Uh, but uh, the range uh, comes uh, right after. So make sure uh, to split uh, what you use as a ROM, even if it's, uh, in this case, uh, RAM that you are running it. But you need to split bootloader and application. That's the first step. So uh, once we have that in place, we also can recommend that for the application, you uh, make sure that actually you generate uh, a binary file. It's the raw uh, binary. And aside of the raw binary, uh, we will also generate here what we call uh, the elf dwarf file. Uh, that's the output file. So that will be used while doing the debugging, jumping from the bootloader to the application. So that's from uh, the application side. Uh, to make sure that you set the right uh, memory. Uh, of course, you also have to set a stack uh, and so on. But since um, that uh, area can be reused, uh, you can uh, mainly use even the same area if you want. So if we have a look here on uh, the bootloader project then, uh, of course, uh, you um, can um, do some customization. Uh, the jump to application, of course, needs to uh, take consideration that some interrupts need to be disabled, but then you can do the jump uh, to the application. But if we look on the settings, again, uh, we um, have the linker file uh, that mainly has space for the bootloader. But here then comes uh, really the fancy and the nice stuff. Uh, under the debugger, uh, we can actually include here as an image so we are including uh, the application output. Uh, if there is any offset, you can use it here. And I'm adding it as debug info only. So mainly when I start a debug session from the bootloader, it will read the elf dwarf file and only extract the symbol so we can run a debug session. But of course, when we generate an output file, 
uh, we have the chance to generate one unique file that includes bootloader and application and that can be solved very simple as i said we generate a raw binary file and for that uh, we just need to define a section and make sure that that uh, symbol is kept so the final output file i mean we put the raw binary as an input and you need to imagine that the final output file that can be an x or even uh, a binary file itself will mainly include both the bootloader and the application. So as you can see, uh, very simple uh, to do the settings here. Uh, we of course have more information. If you want to check um, our uh, broad technical notes, there is some extra hints there uh, too, uh, some extra hints specific uh, to some uh, cores or families. But from here, I can confirm the configuration. From here, once I download the bootloader, you will see it will download the bootloader and application on the same time. So this will take a few seconds here just to be completed. And of course, it's loading the symbols from both the bootloader and uh, the application. So I should just connect here uh, to main in a few seconds. Great. And if we look here and go uh, to the boot main, I can probably set a breakpoint here from the bootloader side, and this message will be printed on the terminal I.O. Uh, the same should probably be important here if we just print some information when we start here from uh, the application. So let's go back uh, to the bootloader. I can first run it, and I end here on uh, main uh, from the bootloader. And from here, of course, I can uh, jump in or just leave it running. We will have a hello from the bootloader and it just made the jump uh, to the main from application. And then here uh, I'm of course, uh, for this example, um, doing a print from the application and uh, some loops uh, from uh, the application. So as you can see, if you set up it in the right way with uh, a bootloader project, an application project, and use uh, the special settings that are available from the linker, from uh, the debugger, loading uh, all uh, the images. Uh, this work of writing a bootloader can, of course, made be uh, made very easy. So you still have access to all information, I mean, from registers, from memory. So this all it's uh, available for you uh, to make it uh, very simple. So as you can see, Writing a bootloader can be, of course, way easier when using the right tools. So I hope you enjoy this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can follow up the upcoming technical topics. Thank you.